Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Nothing But Net, presented to you by Fantasy Phenom. I am your host, JC. Today is Saturday, November 25th, and I will be covering the NBA slate for this evening. I would like to uh, remind you guys that our website has just recently opened this week. Please come check it out. You'll find the link when you come visit us at our uh, YouTube site, plus it's posted all over the place right now. There at the YouTube site, you'll also want to subscribe and hit the little bell next to it, and that'll give you the updates to any and all of our posts of uh, live shows and the audio post. And any links that you need from us, you'll find right there at the YouTube page. Also, come find us on Twitter. You can find us at fantasy underscore phenom. You can look me up. You'll find me at liquor underscore sweet. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R underscore sweet. And after one heck of a day yesterday trying to get the audio out, I do apologize again. I'm hoping that today is a much, much smoother day. I'm praying my uh, emoji fingers are crossed. We're about to find out. So uh, I guess to hell with the babbling. Let's uh, let's get down to business and start talking some basketball. So I hope everybody did pretty good last night. I know uh, it was such a complicated day. I didn't get to play as much as I would have liked to. But I had an all right night, nothing major, but it was still fun. And my biggest concern is how everybody else does. That's that's what I love. So I hope you guys all did well. Um, I haven't heard much of anything. But like I said, it's been pretty hectic with the website opening up. And then uh, all of a sudden, everything just... It was a Black Friday, all right. You could say that in many ways. For uh, It was crazy. So anyways, enough of that babbling. Let's get right into uh, the fan duel. And, you know, if, if you're new to this or... Uh, a new member or whatnot, just now hearing this for the first time, because our our guys Mike and, and Kyle, they uh, during the week they do videos, the live the live video shows for the NBA, the NFL. And come the weekends, things get a little hectic work wise, and they're not able to do the live videos as much right now. So I've been doing the, these audios so that we can keep some uh, stuff going and keep everything keep everything live with the uh, kind of like it's not live because it's an audio. But it's still, I'm right, you know, we're right here with you. And it's it just another perspective and give you guys something to think about. I, I just sit here and I do the re- some research and create these little uh, lineup ideas and throw some ideas out there to give you guys something to think about. And um, usually this is stuff I worked on all night. Um, it was a late night. I didn't realize I fell asleep. I didn't mean to. I meant to have this posted well before the sun came up and... I don't know. It was kind of a crazy thing, but so some of the information I'm still and trying to get details on. I'm finding out some players like Wall is not playing and will be out for a couple of weeks now. Um, I'm still waiting to find out about Oladipo, some uh, other stuff going on. So this isn't all locked in stone by any means. It's just to give some ideas and give you some things to think about that you might not have thought about beforehand. And let's see if maybe my ideas, your ideas, and this is also ideas I'm getting from within the chat of our Phenom group. Because, you know, we do have our own website with our own chat room and everything. And the chat things all broke off into the different sports. Because we cover every uh, DFS sport there is between uh, Facebook and DraftKings. So, don't uh, I don't want you to think that sit here and listen to a lineup that I may throw out here or some ideas and think, oh, I'm going to take that and go take down a GPP and then get a little upset or something because you didn't win. Because that's not, I'm not going to throw you out here a a winning lineup, I don't think. I mean, I guess it's possible. Anything's possible. But that's not my intent. My intent is just to give you some, some different thoughts and ideas and let's put all our work together and see what we can do. This is teamwork. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. So here with uh, today, I kind of like this slate. It is a, what, a 10-game slate today? Yeah. So there's a a lot of plays here that are pretty interesting. And 
some costs that are pretty up and down. Um, I'm one who doesn't tend to go chasing after the big dollars, and here I, I did a little, I went a little up and down with what I was looking at. Like here at the point guards, I just, I don't quite often go after Westbrook because of his money. But I'm looking at him at 10-8 and what he has done. He did the triple-double last night, of course. Was it 39 minutes he played? He got 27 points, 11 boards, 11 assists. He had three steals. Did have five turnovers, but still pulls out a 60.7 Fandle points against Detroit. And you look at his, uh, his game log or something, and you look at his last three games, Detroit, Golden State, New Orleans. 60 fan duel points, 65, 65. The man's on fire right now, and at 10-8, that's kind of a, a low cost for him. So I think I'm going to go ahead and jump on this right now for tonight and see what I can get out of this at this price. And at least I, I'm looking at it right now. This is what I consider the dummy lineup that I start off with, and then as we get closer to the uh, lockdown, I will be, uh, well, I shouldn't say lockdown. Anybody that's ever spent five minutes in jail for a uh, glittering or anything probably just went into uh, panic mode, but I apologize for that. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean when uh, the lockdown time comes. But So, I mean, he may be in there right now on mine. But it doesn't mean he'll be in there come 7 o'clock. So, but I, I kind of like him at that price. But, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of other good plays. With Wall being out, then there's a good play there if you want to go cheap and go all the way down and get his back up. That, I like him. I don't have him in this lineup, but I do like him, Tim Frazier. That's a, a, a nice good play there I think because you can get him for nice and cheap um, I don't even remember what he is on here on FanDuel he is uh, what 3,000 so I mean just by carrying the ball up and down the court a few times he's going to get you value and that gives you a ton of money to play around and do other stuff now I went something close to that when I did this last night and like I said, I didn't know Wall was playing or not last night. I went to my other point guard. I mean, there were a lot of plays I like. I love Kyle, Kyle Lowry today against Atlanta at 8,200. I really think that's a good play. Um, you know, Kyrie, he's been on a nice tear lately at 8,300. I really like Chris Paul. I mean, he is never can tell he was uh, injured this year the way he's been playing. I really think that's a good play. Um, Carlson, I think, I don't know. I mean, he's been playing pretty good. And if this was last year, I think everybody would be like, oh, hell yeah, Kyrie sucks at defense. Because that was kind of the, the past history on him. And I've always been a big Kyrie fan. I'm a Cavs fan. I live in the area. But if you look at the numbers... Boston's not only number one in defense right now, but Kyrie's considered the number one defensive point guard in the NBA right now. And I don't know if that's just him trying to reestablish himself or if it's the system that they're, they have running there in Boston, the coaching. I don't know. But, I mean, a lot of you can't necessarily look at, well, he's going up against Kyrie. There's no defense there. He's going to have a good game. It's not like that anymore. At least statistically. So that uh, I don't know if you not like I said with the calls and you not can't be as real quick to look. Say, oh, he's facing Kyrie. He could have a pretty good game today. I don't know. And that a lot of that will depend on if Old Depot's out or not. Because there's a, another possible pivot play I like on that game if Old Depot plays or not. That uh, a lot of people probably not even thinking of or overlooking and I'll be getting into that as we get to it but so but I went I come all the way down there's a lot I mean like I said there's a lot of potential good plays here I mean 
Rondo, I don't know, he's going against Golden State. His defense sucks. So, I mean, Curry could have a great game today. Um, I went down to McConnell, TJ McConnell, with Orlando coming into Philadelphia. Um, that could make Elf, you know, Elford Payton for Orlando a pretty decent play. He's sitting at 6,900. I think he's been a little off this year to me. And it's I have a hard time watching even highlights of Orlando because it's just, especially, it's funny if I'm sitting and my lady's with me and the highlights are something we're watching and Orlando comes on and she looks up and just sees him running down the court and his hair's bouncing. And I mean, she'll, she'll damn near piss herself laughing. But when you look at like his game log, I mean, his fantasy points, FanDuel points and whatnot and scores and everything have been so erratic. 20, 42, 19, 22, 22, 11, 17. So that's what I don't like. There's not a whole lot of consistency here for me. It's a little up and down. The $6,900 is not a bad price, I don't really think. But for that inconsistency, I mean, you got, he's $400 more than Bledsoe, who's facing Utah. And he's, what, $500 cheaper than uh, Schroeder and a little bit less, or some, not a whole lot more. I mean, you can get Walker and Lowry for a little bit more, but. So I don't, I don't like Peyton for this, but like I said, I did go with uh, T.J. McConnell for Philadelphia with Simmons out today. McConnell will be playing the point guard. He will be you know, getting the start. He will be picking up the minutes. Um, he's already been a big part of the rotation as it is, but now he'll be getting a lot more minutes and he will have the ball in his hands the whole game with uh, Simmons sideline. He is going to be a major, I think, if anybody's paying any attention. They, I mean, this guy could be a chalk play today to a degree because he is sitting at 4,700. He's going to have the ball in his hands a lot and running that Philadelphia offense who ain't the same Philadelphia offense we've been looking at for many years now. They're a much better team. Curious to see how they do without Simmons today. I know that Embiid will be a good play probably. That's a hell of a price to pay for him. But Simmons is a hell of a player. He's been having a hell of a rookie campaign. Probably a lockdown uh, rookie of the year. But I see a lot of people, uh, I don't know, in my eyes, in many ways, if you don't go after McConnell or even Frazier as one of your point guards on FanDuel, then you're an idiot. And I'm just saying that sarcastically. But there's two very nice cheap cheap options especially Frazier at 3,000 McConnell's at 4,700 and they're both going to have the ball in their hand the whole goddamn game and play a lot of minutes and that right there equals points and when you can get a lot of points at a cheap price giving you a lot of money to go play with you gotta love it and just a, you know an example of that with uh spending a 47 here on McConnell and then the 10-8 on Westbrook at the point guards. Then I turn down here to my uh, shooting guards. And I know a lot of people look at, well, I don't spend up much here at this position or this position I spend more here. I know that strategy-wise for a lot of people, and I used to do that myself, and I'm more of a... To me, I let the players, the games, the matchups, everything, I let that dictate as to how... I'm going to build my lineup and where I'm going to spend my money because I'm not going to look at a slate and be, have the mentality that I'm going to spend all my money only on small forwards and point guards and less money on centers and power forwards and that's how it's always going to be. That's how I do it and look at a slate and that's just, no, I, fuck that. I'm going to go according to the players that are available and the matchups. I don't, maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. I've always been known to sweat common sense. That works for me. I'm quite happy. So, but here at the shooting guard, there's a lot of good options I like. Um, you can go Harden, the 11-2, play in New York. I think his minutes have dropped just a little, nothing major, with uh, Paul back. 
He's still putting up good numbers. Definitely a much better option at his price when Paul's out. That's for damn sure. I mean, his numbers, like his last game, it was a, not much of a game there, but I mean, he only put in 31 minutes, put up 37 FanDuel points. And prior to that, it was 51 points, 64, 55, 57, 54, 80, 76. I mean, so it's hard to say. This could be a good game. Depends on what New York team shows up. It is a back-to-back -back for them. This is in Houston. You got DeRozan sitting at 84 against Toronto. And Toronto against Toronto. Against Atlanta. They are also on a back-to-back. -back. Got Oladipo at 83 with Boston coming into town. And Boston's got that number one defense. But Oladipo's play an all-star um, play this year. He is banged up. I have not heard anything yet on him other than you know he hurt his knee last night left the game and was not able to come back and continue to play still waiting for uh, an update the only thing that they have said is if he is not able to play tonight the uh minutes would go up for uh, stevenson and bogdanovich so i do think that could be beneficial in some areas but I do like this play at 76. I can't even believe he's this cheap. And I like this play possibly if Wall was played or not. But without Wall sitting at $7,600 at home, I'll take Beal in a heartbeat. At home against Portland. Not, you know, Portland's obviously not a, a, a lousy team or anything like that. But Beal's a quality player. And if he's going to sit at $7,600 with an average of... Uh, basically 37 fantasy points per game and his their main weapon on offense basically would and wall is out his ball's coming to him this is now his offense tonight and actually i guess Wall's going to be out for a little bit so everything shifts to beal now and i love it at that price that is uh damn excuse me a steal <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. <laughs> uh, Black Friday yesterday, Sneezy Friday, or Sneezy Saturday. Gotta love the weekends for me. Um, no, I just, I just think that Beal, he is a great play. $7,600. How do you pass that up? And, you know, you keep coming down. And I like the Middleton play. They are playing Utah. Utah does slow it down. The Greek Freak should be back today. Um, Hardaway Jr., who has been playing lights out, he is on a back-to-back -back going into Houston tonight. And if he's going to have Harden on him, Harden doesn't play much defense at all. He's sitting at seven grand. That could be a nice, good quality play for all, by all means, I think. And you got Donovan Mitchell, who I, I love what Mitchell has been doing in Utah. He's down to 68. I really like him. Um, I haven't been on Lou Williams like a lot of people have. Playing Sacramento tonight, sitting at 68. That's To me, that's... I don't understand how the hell he's at 68 up there with Beal and and stuff. You know, Beal's at 76. I mean, Beal's obviously more, but... I don't know, Williams is a quality player, but... I don't know if I want to pay somebody $6,800 to come off my bench. I mean, he, he, Williams is costing more money than... Clay Thompson, C.J. McCollum, Jeremy Lamb, Batum. I mean, come on. That's just my opinion. Um, you got Thompson going against, uh, sitting at 6,600, going up against uh, New Orleans tonight, Golden State's at home. That could be a, a decent play. And I went with my other shooting guard. I stayed right at the $6,500 mark because that was another one I could not believe. C.J. McCollum coming into Washington against Bradley Beal. I mean, I got Bradley Beal at 7,600 and then right back at him with C.J. McCollum at 6,500. I just saw those prices and was like, I can't pass this up. I like it. I mean, I, I like the, the Jeremy Lamb play. I, I think he'll be chalk. I think a lot of people will be all over him again. Um, there's a lot of different options, different things that can go on here. And then it kind of slows down. I like uh, 
I think Wesley Matthews could be a, a decent play to look at, sitting at five grand today for Dallas as they host uh, Oklahoma City. That's always uh, a possibility. Marco Bellinelli, he been putting up decent numbers. You look at his 4,600. That's always a pretty good play. Um, and then, like I said, you keep looking and you keep going down. And you start getting down there and getting down there. And it's just, that's why I, I'm kind of just stuck where I, right where I'm happy at there with Beal and McCollum. There's still some good plays there. I mean, you got some cheaper plays with the 4,100 Bogdanovich in Sacramento. Um, Etwan Moore for New Orleans. He, He's pretty cheap at 4,300 and puts up, you know, basic average, good, decent numbers. You kind of count on them. Uh, another solid play I think you'll find today that I haven't heard much about, but I do like him. And I may even make the switch to him to free up even more money at some point. Because I do several lineups, so I'm sure I will and with a few. And something you want to keep an eye on is Marcus Smart for Boston. <clears throat> Because there's going to be some uh, openings. Jalen Brown isn't playing today. Um, I think there's another opening. Somebody else isn't playing. Um, um, Morris, I think he's out today. But either way, I, Marcus Smart's going to end up playing a lot more today. And he's sitting at 5,200. And, and he's averaging over 25 fantasy points per game. Sitting at 5,200. And he's going to put in a lot of minutes today. Facing Indianapolis. And they might be without Oladipo. So he may be dealing with a lot of uh, Stevenson and Bogdanovich. Which, that's a defensive-minded Marcus Smart. This could be a pretty good um, productive game for Smart sitting at 5,200. That could be the steal of the day in a lot of ways. I think Smart, McConnell, Frazier, plays like that could be the steal of the day. And then I, I went ahead and moved on here to the uh, small forward. This one I... I'm not real sure on yet. Um, I like Paul George. I like the way he's been playing. He seems to be fitting right in there with Oklahoma City. Like Antetokounmpo. I mean, it, but 11-8 against Utah where they slow it down. He's coming back from a, a sore knee. I'm not going to pay up that much. Harrison Barnes. He's been playing pretty solid ball. Um, Covington, I do like him at 68, going up against Orlando. He's been playing lights out ball, and that's with Simmons on the court. So I think he could step it up tonight pretty pretty damn nicely and, and do pretty well. So I really like him. Fournier, he's starting the year off playing pretty well lately. He's been, seems like he's been slowing it down a little bit. He's sitting at 6,100 against Philadelphia. I'm not real sure if I'm going to take that gamble right now. Last game against Boston, he put up 17 FanDuel points against Minnesota. It was 20, 25 against Indianapolis, 25, or sorry, 18 against Utah, 28 against Portland. And, you know, prior to that, it was all in the 30s and 40s, so he's on a little bit of a cold streak, I would say. I do like, uh, Prince from Atlanta, they're hosting Toronto. He's sitting at 5,500. I did start here with uh, Kyle Anderson at 5,500 as they go into uh, Charlotte tonight. Charlotte being on a back-to-back. -back. Um, San Antonio being on a, a little bit of rest. And Anderson's just been playing some great, great solid ball at 5,500. I love it. He's averaging 25 fantasy points per game. Last game out against New Orleans, 25 minutes, 12 points, 5 boards, 4 assists, a block, a steal, and 28 FanDuel points. Game prior to that against Atlanta, 30 minutes, 13 points, 6 boards, 10 assists, a block, and 36 FanDuel points. So, I think at $5,500, he was a lock for me at that. I like him at that price especially. So, I had to jump on that. And... At that same price, you got Trevor Ariza with Houston hosting New York today, sitting there. That, I think, is a, a nice play. He's also averaging 25 fantasy points per game. You got uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist sitting there in Charlotte with San Antonio coming into town. That could be a, a decent little play at 5,500. 
He's been uh, playing a lot better the last two games. His minutes are going up a little bit the last, especially the last two. But now with Batum, I'm guessing is going to be out as well tonight. Last night he played 36 against Cleveland, put in 17 points, five boards and an assist, put up 25 points. FanDuel points, game prior to that against Washington, he put up 30 FanDuel points. So he's, he's coming around. And that could be a, a nice little play tonight as well. So I like him. Um, Courtney Lee going into Houston, 5,300. He had a great game last night, and he has been a nice, solid play. I mean, he's just somebody you can just kind of count on without saying much about. He, nobody really talks about him. Everybody just keeps their mouth shut and clicks on the little add button and puts him in their lineup. So, I like him for that. You got, uh, see, in uh, Golden State, you don't know if, supposedly, the way I'm reading everything, it doesn't look like Durant's going to play today. So, does that mean jump on Iguodala? Is Caspi going to start? I mean, I, if Caspi's going to start, I like him again at $3,300. I have him sitting here right now in my lineup. But, or will that mean more step up for Iguodala? Or is it a possible good pivot to, if you look at what Lance Stevenson's done, I've liked him the last couple of days, and he had a decent game the other night, or last night. And I like him at 3,700. And if his minutes are going to bump up, he tends to step up and stuff like this. And at $3,700, if you look what he's been doing, I'll take it in a heartbeat. So I really like that, depending on what's going on in uh, Golden State. So that's a good thing to look at as well. Something to think about. Um, so, I mean, there's you got OG in Toronto because uh, I believe yeah, CJ Miles is still out. So there's some interesting plays, some stuff to think about and look into. Still waiting on news coming out that's kind of got me sitting in no man's land on a couple of plays, but... That's part of uh, the fun of this, except for I hate, and I know we all do in this DFS world, is when they decide to wait till about three minutes, 7.03, and oh, so-and-so won't be playing tonight. And it's just like, ah, everybody just wants to start writing FanDuel and DraftKings, but I want my money back. Anyways, on to power forward, you got Anthony Davis against Golden State at 11. Not a bad play. You know, Simmons is out, so that, which is funny because he plays mostly point guard. You can get him in that position on just about any site except for FanDuel, where you got to play with power forward. You got Blake Griffin going into Sacramento. That would be a nice play at 90. I mean, it's pricey, 9,400. You got Przingas, the unicorn man going into Houston, sitting at nine grand. He is on a back-to-back, -back, but that could be a nice quality little play there. But still, at that price, that boy's got to kick some ass and put up some big numbers. I mean, last night, 36 minutes, 28 points, four boards, two assists, two blocks, 38.8 fan duel points. It's not going to make him worth that money. Yet Carmelo sitting at seven grand. And he's going into uh, Dallas, which is one of the worst rebounding teams in the league, if not the worst. Not that Carmelo's a major rebounder, but that's a potential good play at seven grand. He's been playing really well, especially shooting really well. You got Draymond coming back into play tonight. Going to be facing up against uh, Boogie and AD. So you know he'll be in there getting nice and dirty and earning that 7,900. Aaron Gordon into Philadelphia without, uh, well, no Simmons there, but, I mean, still got to deal with Embiid. Still could have a, a pretty solid game, 7,400. I, I like him. John Collins, another rookie out of Atlanta, facing Toronto today. He's been playing really, really well. I think another good solid play at $6,700. You got Derek Favors. I like, I mean, he's moved over to the center position. 
that's the thing I like about him. Is I mean, you could start him at the power forward, but he's playing a center position right now. And a lot of people weren't sure about him because he's up there, you know, he's a veteran. But since this injury has happened and he's made that move, he's been tearing it up. And he's sitting at 6,700, going up against Milwaukee. Which, even with Milwaukee, you can start... It's funny because you could start two power forwards in that game and they're both playing center. So, you could actually start three centers on FanDuel today and that, just with that game and then start another center. It's almost like a DraftKings lineup. Um, gotta love Tatum. I like him a lot. See, I can't believe... I mean, he's still only at six grand. Thaddeus Young, six grand. He's a good play. Zach Randolph's been playing pretty damn well. Going up against the Clippers tonight. I don't know if I want to take that chance. I do like John Henson. The other, you know, for Milwaukee. That's power forward, but he will be playing center. He'll be back tonight. I do kind of like that play. I think that him and Favors, that could be quite interesting. I do have Henson in at my power forward along with uh, my next play right below him at 5,300. Dario Saric. For uh, Philadelphia, with uh, Simmons out, his minutes are going to go up. He's been playing pretty damn good ball. I see a quiet but very, very good game from him today. I like him a lot. Um, you got Sabonis for um, Indiana facing Boston. I, I really like him. Um, Sia Cam from Toronto. He had a pretty good game. I like him. He's sitting at 4,700. You got Ryan Anderson down to 4,200 at home. I think he's better on the road this year if you look at his numbers, but that's still a guy that can get hot at any minute. He's averaging 22 fantasy points per game, sitting at 4,200. Um, I mean, there's some decent, not much after that, I don't think. I mean, there's you could always find something if need be, but... That's about as far as I go down, and I mean, I'm looking, and I mean, you got Jordan Bell still, but I don't know. I don't think they really play him tonight. That was his big night last night. So then you move on here over to the centers, and you got Boogie, 11-3, up against Golden State, playing against them. I'm not sure he's going to have a chip on his shoulder, which... I think he could be playing the local high school with a chip on his shoulder. So, but that's a lot of money. Still like him, though. Embiid sitting at um, $10,100. Love him. That's a lot of money, but I love him. He is in my starting lineup that I'm going over right now. I do like him a lot. You know, no Simmons there. It's going to be... A little bit different for him right now, but I think this it all comes to him tonight. I think he's just going to dominate this game completely. Um, you know, and then as you start going down and you're looking, you got Dwight Howard at 79 on a back-to-back, -back going up against San Antonio. I, I don't know if I want to pay 79 for Howard myself. You got DeAndre Jordan at 77 going into Sacramento and the way they are defensively and you know with rebounding and everything I, Jordan could have a pretty solid game right here um, you got Miles Turner sitting there with Boston coming into town he's sitting at 77 it could be an interesting play Vukovic coming into Philadelphia I this he's not a defensive player by any means. He's an offensive player, and he's going up against Embiid tonight. I mean, his price dropped to 74. So, I mean, it's a good price if you want to try it. But I, I, I would be fading him today myself. I wouldn't even waste my money on that, not even to experiment. You got Horford sitting at seven grand, and I think that's a steal myself for Horford with what him and Kyrie and that team are doing together. So, I kind of like that play. It's something I would definitely be looking into. Because, I mean, Turner, I like Turner at center for Indianapolis. But 
I like Horford too. And I mean, you can get Horford for seven hundred dollars less than Turner. So, I I just I bit shocked actually to sit here and look at that price. You got Nurik who had a stellar game last night, coming into Washington at sixty nine hundred dollars. He has been quite inconsistent. I'm sure people will be all over him tonight after what he did last night and as up and down as Gortat has been this season. So, I don't know. I, I, don't, I won't be anywhere near him, but definitely look into it very well. If you like him, go for him. Go with your gut, but look into it. He has been very inconsistent. I'm not going to say he's going to have a good game. I'm not going to say he's going to have a bad game. I don't know. It's hard to say with him right now. So definitely look into it. It's all I can suggest. Steven Adams going into Dallas tonight. $6,500. I love it. Dallas sucks at rebounding. Adams is a hell of a rebounder. I can see Adams having a pretty damn nice game tonight. You got New York going into Houston. That makes uh, the whole Capella Cantor plays quite questionable or quite possible. And right now they're just saying that um, Cantor is nursing back spasms and didn't go through too much during shoot around today and is questionable for tonight. No, nothing more, nothing less. So we don't know what's going on there. So that could be something to keep an eye on as far as whether to play Capella being a good play or not. Depends on what happens with Cantor, because that could be quite interesting right there, because Capella's at 6'9", Cantor's at 6'4". It could make them both quite interesting plays. And then a couple other good cheap plays you could look at. You know, Paul Gasol, look at his numbers. Going in, you know, on the rest, going into a, a tired back-to-back -back Charlotte team with um, Dwight. Look at his numbers. He's been consistent. He's averaging damn near 30 points per game. And he's at $5,700. And Willie Cauley-Stein, I think if Sacramento would look at the numbers like we do and pay attention and they play the guy at least 30 minutes, he puts up good, good numbers. You got Willie Cauley-Stein at $5,600. If I... I wish I was related to the coach and I could get him to promise me they would play him at least 31 minutes. He'd be in every starting lineup I had because you know he's going to do good. So I, some stuff to uh, definitely look into there. Um, you know, keep an eye on Kyle O'Quinn, stuff like that. So there's some decent plays there, some stuff to think over. So with that FanDuel one, ended up, McConnell, Westbrook, Beal, McCullum, Kyle Anderson, Caspi at the moment, which, like I said, I'm set and prepared to pivot over to Lance Stevenson. I did this late last night, early this morning. John Henson, Dario Saric, and Joel Embiid. And that is the FanDuel start. And... So, I will go through the DraftKings here real quick. This is one I'm, I'm trying to get a little better at. I'm more primarily FanDuel, but trying to do as best I can with everything for everyone. That's for damn sure. Now here, getting used to the, the price changes and how they, uh, the different options with players. Like I had mentioned with Simmons here, you can play them at small forward or point guard. Yet on FanDuel, you can only play him at power forward. And it's like, what the hell? Damn idiots. But um, I started off here at point guard. Obviously, you got a lot of options. Simmons, who isn't playing today, but then you, know, you can put Oladipo at point guard. You can put Harden at point guard. But I said to hell with all that, and I just jumped on Lowry. I like Lowry. He's at 7,700. Schroeder has no defense, in my opinion. I like Schroeder as a player. I think he's a good player. A lot of these players today, they may be good offensively. Defensively, they suck. So, I'm all over Lowry. I just like that play. Moving on to shooting guard. 
again, you got a lot of great plays here. A lot of good picks. So much to choose from. I mean, the options are so much larger on here because the way they position them. But I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, Larry Beal still with Wall being out. I like Beal, 7,400. I like that play against Portland. Then on moving down here to the small forward, which is funny because who I have at small forward on FanDuel, I could only play at shooting guard. And I, I went ahead and made that move that I was talking about on FanDuel that I, I hadn't made on FanDuel yet. But I went ahead and jumped on Marcus Smart. I do think he's going to get the, the good quality minutes there on DraftKings. He's averaging 25.3 fantasy points per game. And he's sitting at $5,100. To me, that's a steal. That is a, uh, I guess, with the holidays and everything, a, a Black Friday gift to jump on in a heartbeat. That is a sale from hell. Jump on it. Get it. Because he's going to have a good game today. I can see it. Uh, off to the power forward. This is, this is where I like getting to where I like DraftKings a little bit. It's, that's where I, I got Boogie in there, power forward. Went with DeMarcus. He's sitting, you know, 11 grand. But I like it. I'm going to take the chance. I think he's going to have a pretty good game. I just, I got a feeling he's going to have an attitude. Something tells me, I hope to got him and uh, or Draymond doesn't get him fired up to where he gets himself kicked out in the first quarter. But then on to center, a lot of options, obviously. And I'm sticking with uh, with Adams, like I had mentioned. I like that matchup with Dallas. And he's sitting at $5,400. Averaging 30 points a game, sitting at $5,400. I'll take it. And going against Dallas, I see him having a solid rebounding game, everything. And then you, you move on down here to the guard position with uh, Orlando coming into Philly with um, Simmons being out. McConnell sitting at four grand. Even with Simmons playing, McConnell's in the lineup as much as he is. Even as the backup like that, he's averaging 20 and a half fantasy points per game on DraftKings. And now at four grand, he's going to be controlling and running that team tonight. I see him jumping up pretty nice, having a pretty nice game. I think that's where I'm jumping on. And just like with the the uh, forward position, I stayed with that team and went with Sarik again, sitting at 5100. I see him stepping up and having a nice game here as well. And then to continue uh, saving a little bit of money, I went ahead and went with uh. At the utility position, I jumped on Tim Frazier with him uh, taking over for John Wall during Wall's injury, sitting at 3,600, I think, you know, facing Portland. And like I've, I've complimented Dame a million times, he's a hell of a ball player, but he is another one defensively. There's not much to it. I'm not saying Frazier's going to go out and score 45 points and walk away with a triple double, but. I mean, this is saying he's averaging 13 and a half fantasy points per game. I could see him easily walking out of here with 20 plus tonight. Now, I'm not 25 plus. It's possible. Anything's, anybody can have a great game. But I do see him walking out with at least 20 tonight. And that at $3,600, I'm on it. So you take, like I said, this, this lineup here that I'm looking at right now, Lowry. Beal, Marcus Smart, DeMarcus Cousins, Adams, McConnell, Sarek, and Tim Frazier. And that's with $700 left in the bank to uh, do some pivoting and make some changes as uh, the news comes in throughout the day to see how that looks, see what I think, and make some uh, lineup changes as that day goes on. And it is actually it's still earlier than I thought. I hadn't slept much the last few days at all. The website being up and everything, trying to make the transition from our river group to the website and spread the word and get everything handled. So I guess for now, this is about it. I hope it was uh, 
any of this information is useful and you guys have a great day today um please come check out the website i wish you guys all the best today and i keep wanting to say something and i keep forgetting it because i'm just dead tired at the moment <laughs> but i i wish you guys the best um give me some thumbs up if you don't mind it lets me know that i'm doing things on the right track with you guys and making things easier for you guys or doing just making you guys happy keeping you guys happy giving you guys good information that's my goal that's what i'm trying to do uh, if you have any questions ask them in the comment section or hit me up in the group chat if you're part part of the group being a member part of the family or hit me up on twitter whatever i do everything i can to pay attention to everything as best i can and get back to your questions as fast as possible um, I hope you all have a great day. Go out, kick some ass. Let's take down some GPPs. Love you all. Have a good one. Good day, good night, and goodbye.